Everybody, welcome back to X231 part 39. Today, I'm going to finalize the installation of both the main gear set shafts in the transmission. I know I told you guys I was going to do it last time and I didn't, but believe me, we'll get to it now. So, I got a little bit of housekeeping to do first. Uh, if you remember back from installing that lower gear set, I left the cotter pin out of that castle nut way down there because I was nervous about whether or not I could get this top sliding gear shaft in without being able to move the third gear. Uh, we conquered all of those hurdles that shaft is in. So first thing to do today is to get a cotter pin through that nut down there. Little players, big problems. There, fit is nice and tight. It's not going to rattle around in there, causing any kind of wear to break any of the legs off. That's good. Okay, the next two pieces are going to go in are on the bench here. We're going to Focus on this one first. It looks kind of like a mushroom top. This is basically like a wheel bearing cap that goes over the uh, the end of the hub and seals uh, the wheel bearing, protects the nut and the pin and all that stuff. Uh, this one is actually handmade. You can tell this is X231's original one. Looks like they torch welded it to me. Then they bent a flat piece of steel around to provide like the friction surface for it to go in. You can see. Uh, Right here, there's the splice off the end of my finger. They did a pretty good job of flushing all that out and grinding it. Um, basically, this piece is going to go in the transmission, and it covers over the top of the nut that uh, is on the end of that pinion shaft. You wouldn't think this would need to be in there to seal anything, but you'll learn why in a minute. Production 445s have basically the same piece, only you can see this one is uh, much more... Um, professional looking. It's been uh, stamped out of one piece of steel. It's domed a lot better. It's a lot more uh, accurate and refined, but production tractors use the same thing. Again, I'll tell you why in a minute. We'll put this on first. All right, the other piece on the bench that's going in next, another handmade piece um, exclusive to X231. It's just a flat piece of metal, a couple straight bends, radius on the bottom, and this is looks to be soldered. Uh, this little metal tube, this little outlet on the end is soldered on there. Again, handmade. Um, way back in part 24, I uh, did a pretty good rundown of this piece and why it needs to be in the transmission. Another interesting aspect from the prototype gear case is it has this little kind of handmade little metal trough that will go, hopefully you can see, right in this hole up here and bolts to the side of the case. What that trough does is it catches oil that's being flung around by the gears, transmission gears rotating, and it funnels that oil up into this front compartment where the high-low range torque amplifier is and helps to actually raise the fluid level in that compartment so that that high-low unit can pick that oil up. You look over here, it was an important enough design feature that they cast that in, made it an integral piece of the, uh, the housing. So one less uh, separate piece that they had to bolt in and risk possibly coming loose and rattling around, getting in gears, stuff like that. We all looked so young back then. So hopefully now it makes perfect sense uh, how this little trough ties into this cap that goes over the end of that pinion shaft down here. That cap is in place to prevent the drain back that would happen from this front compartment being at a higher level than the back one. Um, you can really see the difference here when you look at the level plugs on the side. This plug up here is for the torque amplifier compartment, whereas this plug down here is for transmission and rear end. So that little trough goes a long way towards making sure everything gets the oil that it needs. Now to put it in, I've got some sealer on those bolt threads because that hole was kind of an afterthought and it is not a blind hole, it goes all the way through, so if I didn't have sealer on those threads, that would seep oil to the outside, create quite a mess. Good job. 
just trying to get everything lined up. Probably can't see because my hand is in the way, but starting the bolt now. That should do it. And this little tin trough just embodies why I'm so interested in these prototypes because it's all these little afterthought like pieces like this that just make you wonder what the engineering was like back in the day. I mean, you can see the bolt for it is a little longer than it needs to be. It sticks out. You know, that is the original bolt. I kept it with that trough, but they didn't need to care. This was probably a solution to an unexpected problem that they had because once they realized that this uh, front compartment was going to need a higher oil level than the rest of it for all those pieces to live, their first inclination, and this is me speculating now, their first inclination could have been, well, we're going to need a scavenge pump of some kind now to draw oil from back here to put up here. How are we going to regulate it? That's more engineering. That's more development. That's more cost. That's more time invested. Guy probably went home, slept on it, woke up at 2 in the morning and thought, you know, we don't need an extra pump. Let's just cap off the front of that bearing bore there. I'll make this little tin trough. Um, these transmission gears are rotating, slinging oil anyway, so that trough's going to catch all that oil. It'll run up here. It'll keep that level where it needs to be. It's self-regulating because once we get full here up to that opening, nothing else is going to run forward. It's all going to just kind of stay where it wants to be. Boom, we're done. Furthermore, we can make a foundry, guys, worry about that trough. We don't need to make it a separate piece. We'll just make it a cast-in feature. Bam, perfect system. I mean, it's just kind of interesting to think, kind of imagine, you know, what a lot of the, uh, the engineering uh, processes were like on these back in the day. All right, enough talking. I'm getting off track again. Uh, next step now is to install this uh, bearing support housing. This is what I rebuilt in the last episode. That's going to uh, fix the front of this shaft in position and locate that front bearing. Okay, with the front of that sliding gear shaft supported, I can now position the race on the rear. Got a new one of those. But once again, we have some parts out on the bench side by side. We have the nut that positions the depth of that bearing race right here. This is the prototype one. There's a lock for it. Here's the production nut and the lock for that. Once again, we have some differences. The prototype nut threaded portion is slightly larger around than the production one. Um, the prototype one has eight different holes that the lock that secures it can engage with. Okay, That bolt threads into the back of the case and this lock is meant to hold that nut from turning. So prototype one has eight different spots for adjustment. The production one has 15. Plus they came up with a much better retention method for the lock instead of the prototype style which has the single leg that goes into a hole and it, it can be prone to movement like that. The production one, it's still just a stamped little flat piece of metal, but it actually has an end that surrounds each tooth. So there really can't be any sort of movement there. Plus you have almost twice as many spots for adjustment to better fine tune the position of the bearing and the end play of that shaft. So I'll begin by carefully tapping that race far enough in for me to get the nut to start. I put a light coating of oil on the threads just to help the process a bit. Roll this in until it contacts that race. So I've still got quite a bit of end play on the shaft, about 15 thousandths. And I'm going to use the production manual procedure to set this top shaft up because nothing here is really uh, any different from a production 445. Uh, what I need to do now is turn this nut in until I have zero in play. In other words, no movement on that needle. Once I find the zero in play point, I back it off until I reach between one thousandths to four thousandths in play. Anywhere in there, it says it should be good. Like I say, I've got 15 thousandths now, so I've got a ways to go. It's going to be a little bit of trial and error to get this where I need it to be. Okay, and to save you all the boring details, I had some trial and error, some back and forth, and I finally settled on a very respectable 2 thousandths end play right in the middle of that spec. So, we're not slacking, but we're not showing off. We're right in the middle. Going to leave it there. 
All right, back to the bench probably for the last time today. I'm at the point where I can put this lock on that nut and finalize the installation of that top shaft. But, you know, sorry for talking again, guys, but the more I look at this lock, the more it just tells a story. Um, you can tell it's absolutely handmade. You know, it has a lot more character than the production version, which is a lot cleaner, uh, crisper lines. But you can tell this was just stamped out on a machine. They actually went with a hacksaw and cut this one out. You can still see the witness marks from every stroke of the blade where they notch the uh, the two corners out to make that little tab. You can also see where they uh, hacksawed the end of it off and cut it to length. It's just a piece of uh, three quarter inch wide by eighth inch thick uh, steel strapping material, but they cut a slot in it for the bolt. It's kind of wore. It's kind of thin in those areas. Um, you know, you can see where it looks like it's been loose, running loose for a while. You know. The perfectionist in me says you got to make a new one of these, but the practical side of me also says this parade tractor is going to fare just fine with this old worn lock. I don't really have to worry about it a bit. Another interesting difference between these, the more I look at them, I realize it's the simple little details like this production lock just has a round hole in it, whereas the prototype one is slotted. And uh, that tells a little bit of the engineering uh, story as well um, because the production uh, nut had a lot more positions, almost twice as many positions for the lock to engage with as the prototype one did, they didn't need to slot that hole because this lock was meant to always be 90 degrees to that shaft and you had so many positions on the nut, you just ran the nut to the closest available one that meets your uh, in place spec and boom, you lock it down. But considering the prototype nut only has eight available spots for this lock to engage with, that's why they slotted that hole. It creates for more than sufficient travel to uh, bridge the distance between any two of those holes. So wherever that nut ends up, this thing can find a spot to go into. So there was a thought process behind slotting that the way they did. Another thing I noticed was uh, it's got a bend in it, and I couldn't remember if that was a result of some damage or what. Now that I've got it together, it makes perfect sense. It's because the nut sticks out proud of the uh, back end of this uh, uh, transmission case. That's just normal deformation from that bolt applying its clamp load to it. So again, that's just uh, that's just how it needs to be. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get this thing put on before I find something else to talk about. I got a little bit of uh, blue thread locker on the, the threads of that nut. I got a little bit of uh, blue thread locker on the, the threads of that nut because I'm nervous about the worn surface of this lock where the bolt has been in the past. Good. So with that, it's time to wrap up yet another installment, but think of it this way, with what I got done today, the majority of all the gear train is all back in place. Um, it's been a lot of work and a lot of fitting and a lot of problems and there's still some work left to go but even though the scenery doesn't really seem like it ever really changes I'm making progress one little bit at a time so I can go in one of two directions with this project I can either finish out the rest of the torque amplifier planetary assembly and seal the front of that transmission housing or I can get some uh, shift rails forks maybe even a shifter on it kind of want to get a shifter on it so I think that's what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to keep at it here Hope to see you guys back again. Thanks for watching.